Good morning, and this is part two of a Bible study with me. And um, right now we're going to be talking about Genesis chapter two and three. Chapter two is pretty much an introduction to man, woman, and the Garden of Eden. Man was created first in this section where God forms man from the dust of the ground, breathes the breath of life into his nostrils, and he becomes a living soul. God then creates the Garden of Eden, and within this garden, there are beautiful trees filled with fruit. Two special trees in particular, the first being the Tree of Life, and then the second being the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil. God then places man into this beautiful garden that he just created, and he tells him, you can partake and eat freely of any tree in this garden except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil because if you partake in this tree that day you will die after god gave his warning he then decided that man should not be alone and he needs a very special helper first he tried creating um the beasts of the field and the birds and he was like you know what i'm gonna bring these to man and see if this is something that he would find suitable for a helper. Man ended up giving names to all these creatures, but none of them were quite the kind of helper that he was needing. So God gets an idea. He puts man asleep and he takes a piece of his rib and then from there creates his perfect helper. Because who would be a more perfect helper than someone who is just like man? And man names this perfect helper woman because woman is taken out of man. We're now in chapter three. And in chapter three, there's two major key events. One being the fall and two being the curse and promise. In the beginning of this chapter, the first thing they do is introduce us to the serpent. He goes to Eve and asks her, if God said that they are not allowed to partake in any of the trees, Eve says, actually, yes, the one tree we are not allowed to eat or even pretty much associate ourselves with is the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because if we do, we will die. The serpent brings up the first lie. He goes to her and says, like, what are you talking about? That's cap. God is lying to you. He just doesn't want you to be as knowledgeable of good and evil as he is. He doesn't want you to be like God. This is super ironic because Adam and Eve are already created in the image of God. So the serpent is really just trying to trick them and he succeeds. Like I said in the beginning, all these trees are beautiful. All of them, every single one in the Garden of Eden. So she's looking at it and she's like, well, it looks good, hmm. people desire it. I might as well just partake. And this right here was humanity's literal downfall. Oh, but it gets worse. She did not only eat it, she brings it to her man and she gives it to him and he too eats of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. And once they partook in that fruit, they realized that they were naked because their eyes were now opened to what good and evil was. And so they began to make themselves clothes. After they made themselves clothes, they hear God coming. God comes in and they hide. And he kind of questions it. He's like, where are you? And why are you hiding? Then man tells him, I was afraid. I, I was afraid because you're coming and I'm naked. And then God looks at them and he's like, who told you you're naked? You definitely partook in the fruit I told you not to eat. This is when they start pointing fingers at each other and playing the blame game. Man tells God, well, the woman you created for me, the woman that you gave to me as a helper, was the one that gave me the fruit. So I ate it. God asked the woman, oh my gosh, what have you done? And she then blames the serpent. This is when the Lord curses the serpent, women, men, and humanity as a whole. God speaks to the serpent first. 
And he gives the first promise of redemption. He speaks of a woman and of her offspring, whom will pretty much save humanity, but it comes at a cost. And as we know, this prophecy was fulfilled. This foreshadowing did happen where the Messiah came down and died for our original sins. And the cost was him dying. God then speaks to the woman and tells her that she will have painful childbearing. And then he goes to man and talks about how he will have laborious work. So pain and suffering and hard labor are now put into humanity. The last thing the Lord speaks on is death. That you are dust and you came from dust and to dust you shall return. After all this, Adam and Eve's names are then revealed. Eve meaning living because she is going to be the giver of life to all. And Adam means man. God clothes Eve and Adam, and then casts them out of the garden, places a cherubim or an angel with a fire sword at the front so they will not be able to partake in the tree of life. A lot of people think that it's because God's like, you can't be here anymore, but it's not because they can't be there anymore. It's because of what they will do if they stay. God is afraid that if they stay, they'll partake in the tree of life. If they never touched the tree of knowledge and only ate of the tree of life, they would have lived eternally with God forever and not known evil or sin, especially because they were created in the image of God. Being created in the image of God, you're not evil. God is not evil. So they would just have lived life eternally with the Lord, not ever knowing what sin or evil was. But since they disobeyed the Lord and fell into temptation, they now know what sin and evil is. And if they are to stay in the Garden of Eden and eat of the Tree of Life, they will live eternally with sin and evil. And there will be no way they will ever be able to be redeemed. Meaning that the Messiah couldn't even have saved them. So because God cast them out, he saved them and humanity from living life eternally with sin so that the, so that the Lord may come down as man, as Jesus, and save everyone from their original sin so that we may one day be able to live eternally with the Lord once we are dead and we can go to heaven and that's pretty much it for adam and eve one reoccurring thing that we will see in the first couple chapters of genesis with like cain and abel and noah is that humans try to be godly without god and this backfires completely but god loves his creation so much he wants us to work he wants us to be able to live with him in heaven one day so he gives us chance after chance and we'll see that but if you keep continuing to listen to my bible studies we'll get into this in the next part